So our next speaker is George Cochran from, uh, he's a senior solutions engineer from Datto. Uh, George was one of the stars of our first security conference a couple of years ago in 2019, and so we demanded to have him back again this year. So he likes creating disasters, he's gonna create some more. All right, imagine this, everyone finally comes together and we're going via Zoom to get my screen from here to there. But it works and that's all we need. So. Let's rattle through a little bit. Um, Datto, not a household name, and I have to say that's entirely intentional. We are a business that provides technology to IT specialists. So if you haven't seen us on the side of a bus, then it doesn't mean that we are not a sizable and reputable company. Uh, we have been going since 2007. We're all over the world, about 50% of our 2,000 employees in the US, the rest are based around Europe and Asia. And uh, as, as we mentioned earlier, we have actually been Breakwater partners since 2016, so that's actually quite a long time in the tech world, uh, a good five and a half years of, uh, of providing uh, backup systems and all that good stuff. So. Just trying to get your heads in the mindset of, of what is the most critical parts of your data and infrastructure. So it may be running on physical servers or it may be running in a cloud service. So I think most of the world these days has moved to Microsoft 365 or Google for their email service. So if you've ever logged in through a web browser to access your emails through Microsoft Online, it will be that. Your files, maybe you have them on a file server and you have to VPN if you're working from home, or it could be in SharePoint or OneDrive or some other product. And then there's a whole range of other applications that you may not even realize are running on a server. So yeah, it could be your finance system, your bookkeeping system, some database with all your customer details in it. There's many different functions, even actually your phone system. That could be one. If you lose that phone system server, you can't even call for help. So <laughs> you're a little bit stuck there. But Microsoft 365, don't, don't Microsoft back that up? Yeah, but also kind of no. So Microsoft are providing a high availability service, which sounds very impressive but it really means that they are providing the servers for you and they're building all the software to do the emails, the OneDrive. They are not liable for data loss and they say that very clearly in their terms and service. If you don't trust me, please just Google Microsoft Service Agreement. You will find all three of these references and they even say explicitly use third-party apps and services to back up your data, which makes a lot of sense. You wanna have an external copy of your data. It's a bit of a shared responsibility. So as I was saying, on the left, Microsoft are great at stopping power outages, hardware failures, software failures, but these applications are still used by people and therefore we have you know, people deleting data by mistake. We have numerous um, types of external threats from hackers. And we need to make sure that we have another copy of our data. And just a bit more statistics. I just find this one entertaining that there's all these uh, advanced cyber attacks, 7% of malicious deletions and viruses and hackers, but actually about half of it is people making mistakes. So, the backup has uh, always, always protected us against that. What about the physical servers or the other types of servers in a private data center, things like that? Well, the consideration about backing up those is actually the cost of downtime, the cost of an outage. Um, we have quite a lot to do when we have a critical server failure. I'm sure any breakwater engineers in the room will agree. And even comparing um, the typical ransom demand, we do surveys every year of all of our IT companies around the world, about 17,000 of them now. And we get some statistics like the average ransom demand for the typical customer was about 4,200 pounds last year. That's actually not a huge amount. 
and they try and find that midpoint where they will actually get people to pay up. They can't ask for exorbitant money. But even if you pay the ransom, the average cost of a incident has gone up to 200,000. And what that means is you have lost access to your systems for a week, maybe two weeks. And you can't collect payments from customers. You can't fulfill new orders. They can't find you on the website. Or perhaps it's reputation damage. They see on local news sites that your business has been taken down by an attack. And that massively slashes your new customers for the next year or three. So what we're going to see in the disaster demo today is um, a combination of our server protection, uh, which is actually the little black box sitting on the mini table. That is a Datto backup appliance. And depending on how much data you have, can be a bit smaller, can be bigger. We install that into the same location as the servers we're protecting. And that has our first local set of backups. That device then sends data off-site to Datto's cloud, which has um, yeah, a data center in Slough, a wonderful place to go. And um, if you would like as well, a secondary replication. So it's already purpose-built to do a good job of basic backup, getting data uh, copied and then off-site as well. But what makes it very impressive and the, basically the main takeaway I'd like you to have from, from this disaster demo is we are not just giving a copy of the data. Downloading 10 terabytes of data could take hours and hours. We're actually providing the ability to run your failed server on that tiny little data box on stage in a matter of seconds or minutes. OK? So it's real failover. That's a common term in the industry. Getting our server back up and running in a temporary way, uh, so to speak. It's, it's on that box, and it won't be there forever. But it gets you through the rest of that working day, that working week. And Breakwater can then get you back to production when there's been time to investigate what happens with the original server. And then finally, if everything goes wrong in that first uh, local backups, that's possible. Maybe there's, I really hope it doesn't happen, but maybe a fire. That would take out the Datto appliance too. And that's why you see the VM for virtual machine in Datto's cloud as well. We can use Datto's data centers to run a disaster recovery. OK. So it's at this point that we hop over to my machine. You might see there on the stage, there is my little laptop. Uh, Brad is getting ready with his uh, protective gear on. And yeah, this little laptop, um, if I open up the documents here, you'll see it open up on the laptop there as well. This is going to play the part of our average user and also kind of our critical data that we want to protect. Um, on the desktop here is an Excel document called Purchasing and Billing. It's got all of our latest prices for this uh, upcoming year. And it was sent around in the email that um, it came from um, Harry's personal email address because he forgot to use his work one. But it's Harry. We know him. It, we, we should probably trust this. So I open that up. And sure enough, Excel 2010 opens. I'm sure Breakwater could sell me a more up-to-date uh, licensed version. But uh, I'm being a bit lazy with this. And yeah, there we go. We've got our Excel document. But that's actually a little bit of smoke and mirrors. If we look in the background, um, what's actually happening is this is not an Excel document. This is a script. OK, you won't be able to read that tiny text. But that has gone through. And as fast as that has encrypted all of the files on my computer here. There's one exception, actually. The Excel document is open, so I can't overwrite that. But everything else is gone. And now we really are in a bit of a pickle. The other thing that you might see is, simultaneously, OneDrive's getting all excited. It's found 125 changes, and it's so excited to send that to the rest of the company. 
So we have got a lot of data from our device that needs recovering. Oh, there we go. There's the good old ransomware message. So Brad, I think it's time for us to cause a bit of havoc. Um, we actually don't quite know what's going to happen on this one. Um, so, Brad, we're going to give this a go. Um, we're going to leave it powered on as well, just to see what happens. Uh, I'll let you do that. You've got the gloves on. And what happens? Hmm. Oh, it fizzes nicely. Oh, there's a bit of a crack there. Sorry, I'll get, make sure that everyone can see what's going on. Still working? Oh, blue screen of death. <laughs> Good old blue screen of death. Um, I'm going to Google the error code from that later and see how do you fix a, a nitrogen bath. Um, but lovely. Thank you very much, Brad. Round of applause for our cold destruction. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our disaster recovery appliance here, which was backing up that laptop. And we have a yellow message, which we're going to read out. This agent has identified as having signs of ransomware. No surprise there. Yes, it does have ransomware. So what Breakwater will be able to do is go to the Restore tab, find the server that was broken, and start a local virtualization. Now, it says, don't use this backup. This one's got ransomware still. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Hopefully, you can read that a bit better. So we're going to use the one before. And this one does not have ransomware. Now, the backups can theoretically happen as frequently as every five minutes. So this backup happened nine minutes ago. Now, probably every 15 minutes is enough to capture all of the data that you're making every day. But from the moment of clicking the Start button here to getting our server back up and running, or in this case, a laptop, um, here we go, loading into Windows again. Now, I'm not going to bore you by logging in and clicking on the files and things. But believe me, as an engineer, seeing this so soon after completely destroying the computer is an absolute saving grace. OK. Now, I can keep going with this, actually. Um, if I, oh, I actually closed the tab, which I shouldn't have done. Uh, let's go back here a step. We said that if we lose everything in a fire or a bigger disaster, then maybe our data box doesn't work either. So the little virtual machine that's running on this right now, um, well, it's not so happy when I take out the drives. So there goes one. There goes two. The techs in the room are just wincing at this point. Oh, that data's going to get corrupted. Yes, it will. And that's OK. Uh, boot that off. Probably should have done that before taking the drives out. There we go. So now we are in the really big disaster territory. We have no local recovery. And we're really counting on Datos Cloud to get us back up and running. So what I'm going to do is go to the recovery from the cloud site. Again, don't worry about what I'm clicking here. This is the breakwater job. But this is why they have been a partner of Datos since 2016. And they are big fans of what we do. I've got the same device again. I'm going to run this as a test for now. Let's bump it up, make it powerful. And click Go. And now Datos Cloud is running our server. OK, so again, just put this into context of your own business. Is this server your file server? Is it your phone system? Is it your um, yeah, database with all your customers' details on it? Knowing that this can get back up and running so quickly is a massive difference between a very costly disaster and something that we can handle by the end of the day. Now, our final problem here is our OneDrive data. And uh, here it is on this tab. Let's zoom in again. So this is the OneDrive that we were logged into from that computer. And if I go to my invoices, ah, 
yeah, that's, um, that's encrypted. So what you might think to do is to go to the home page here and find the undo button. Uh, is there any? No? OK. All right. OK, so let's just try it with my invoices folder instead. I can download it. I can rename it. No? OK. You really have to go to each individual file before you can see the versions and move it back to the version before. And you can imagine, if you've got entirely encrypted OneDrive, you don't want to be doing this for each individual file. So that's where Datto's Microsoft 365 backup tool comes in. We have an overview of all of our uh, users. We are backing up their OneDrive, emails and calendar, SharePoint, and Teams. But in this case, we want to go to our OneDrive. We'll find that user. His name was Walter. And we have even the ability to just restore everything in one go. I'm going to start off this process. It's going to, I won't do everything for now because it will take a little bit of time to download. But if I just find that invoices folder again, in the last backup, these backups happen three times a day. We should have the original version of these files. We do, they're still images. So I'm going to take all of these. Uh, okay, I could have done the whole folder, that will do. And we're going to restore back to Walter. Uh, with the permissions, if he actually has open access to that. And as we come over to OneDrive, we will see in quick fashion, oh, I do not like OneDrive. <laughs> uh, here we go. Our restore folder started a few seconds ago with inside it, invoices, and our five invoice images. Um, so job done. That is disaster recovery of Microsoft 365 and our servers in uh, hopefully no more than a half hour presentation.